Well, it's a great pleasure to be here on a lovely warm morning in Brussels with Dr. Thierry Hertog. Good morning, Thierry, and thank you for finding the time. Thank you, Phil. I'm very honoured to be able to talk uh, with you in anti-aging systems. Oh, you're too kind. You're absolutely too kind. A true gentleman. We know that very oh. well. <laughs> <laughs> now, there'll be a lot of people watching who will be very familiar with you, your work, uh, your books, many things that you've been involved in. But perhaps in your own words, please tell us a little bit about yourself and your background, please. Well, I'm a doctor who works in hormone therapy and also what is called anti-aging uh, medicine. Uh, basically, it's more reversing aging medicine. And I'm a very enthusiastic doctor working in this sector. I work with uh, nine doctors in my center in Brussels. And basically, I'm also the president of the International Hormone Society, which is about 3,000 uh, physicians as members, and the World Society of Anti-Aging Medicine, which has about 8,000 uh, physician members. And I write books. I have uh, a book here like called uh, The Hormone Handbook, which is probably the most sold book on how to do hormone therapy uh, in physicians. And I have also at an atlas mm -hmm. of endocrinology uh, for hormone therapy, which is also a good bestseller. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we will probably talk about this, this small book, this one of the small books I wrote about oxytocin, yes. which is uh, very interesting. So basically, um, I, I think I work in a very a medicine that makes uh, people enthusiastic and me certainly. That's wonderful. That's wonderful indeed. In, indeed, that comes over from you very much. And many people will know, of course, you are one of the leaders in anti-aging medicine. Where do you think in general where, where anti-aging medicine is today? Well, anti-aging medicine is m farther than we uh, thought we ever would go and it's going uh, further uh, on. Um, um, three years ago, for example, I, I, was, I thought I knew almost everything and I can say I knew very little. Uh, we are now more in what is called reversing aging. And uh, I think and I really believe that the dream will come true that in the next 20 or 30 years or maybe 10, 20 percent of people mm -hmm. will probably be able to totally reverse aging mm -hmm. from age 70 back to age 35, for wow. example in and out. That's fantastic, that's fantastic news. And I know there's many topics we can cover today, but I think we'll, we'll concentrate on one and two and would love to talk a little bit more about oxytocin in just a moment. And quite recently, Thierry, you wrote a book called Passion, Sex and Long Life, The Oxytocin Adventure. Can you tell us a little bit, what is oxytocin? Well, uh, oxytocin is uh hormone and maybe the only reason why you and I are together here and the cameraman is there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's a hormone that brings people uh, together, it makes you more affectionate, you want to see people, you're not disturbed by people, you like them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also a hormone that is very important, it's the hormone of orgasm. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a very strong feeling and if you have an orgasm, mm -hmm. you have to have a level enough of oxytocin. Mm -hmm. And there are many more actions of oxytocin that are important, that are uh, explained mm -hmm. in the book. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, uh, uh, people with um, autism, mm -hmm. uh, children with autism or uh, adults with schizophrenia mm -hmm. get less schizophrenic or much less autistic uh, with this uh, small molecule. That's fascinating. Now, I happen to know that, um, as you use an expression, you're a man who puts his <laughs> money where his mouth is. In other words, you try products before you yes. give them to patients. You've obviously tried oxytocin. Could you please tell us what your experiences were? Well, it, it changed my life. <laughs> so um, I'm a person who's a hard worker. I mm -hmm. can resist to any critic because I don't care about critics. I do take attention, but not really. It doesn't hurt me um, because I was low in oxytocin, actually. And uh, so the time I tried oxytocin was very strange. I, I didn't feel so much difference in the beginning, but I had to go and, and buy a horse for um, my daughter. And I began talking to the people there very easy, mm -hmm. uh, asking questions. And I even talked so easily, I was so sociable that I even mm -hmm. talked very easily with the horses. Uh -huh. So basically, uh, this was a surprise to me. And uh, it was also very pleasant. Um, I, I saw this also in other family members that uh, there was a change when they took oxytocin. So I really think this is a very crucial hormone. Yes. It makes relationships between people much better. Oh, that's interesting. That could explain, of course, why the press has dubbed it the bonding hormone or sometimes even the, the love hormone. We've even heard that exactly. expression. And, and does that help to explain some of its medical uses? 
in let's say schizophrenia where they, these people need the empathy they need that connection absolutely those people with schizophrenia or autism they not only have low levels of oxytocin but the receptors where the oxytocin works are not of such good quality they're low in number and don't work so well so basically i in my experience it's the best uh, treatment they should have it's not the only treatment but certainly it's the number one treatment they should have mm. I suspect a lot of doctors that might be watching will probably say, oh, I know about oxytocin, we use it to aid childbirth. But yes. we're talking obviously about very different uses and, and we'll get a little bit into the different ways to use oxytocin, the different dosages. So it's not obviously, it's just be way beyond just the age. So the two classical ways is for breastfeeding, it mm -hmm. improves breastfeeding, mm -hmm. and uh, it improves also at childbirth delivery. It makes the uterus contract more, so their uh, delivery will be quicker and the baby gets out of the uterus. Yes, yes. Well, that's great. And uh, I think I'm sure our viewers are going to look forward to us discussing more about the, um, how we might call the current off-label uses for oxytocin. Yeah, that's, that's fascinating and I think that a lot of people, um, they, their main interest, let's be honest, is from the sort of sexual perspective. I read some research a little while ago that showed that when women who were suffering from severe fibromyalgia and in a lot of pain, they noticed that they had no pain when they orgasmed. Has that got something to do with oxytocin? Yes, uh, oxytocin is a hormone of orgasm and that actually men's, makes men sleep after. Uh -huh. They don't have pain after <laughs> orgasm. And women, they're wide awake, but they don't feel any pain. They really just feel a very pleasant feeling in them. Uh, it has been even used as an anti-painkiller pain, uh, uh, by injecting into the spine. Um, so people have back pain, they, they lost the back pain with uh, oxytocin. Uh, it's um, very interesting and actually it does it but this is a sort of mechanism, yes. it increases your morphine inside. Ah. So you have more opioids, that's ah. our own morphine that we make, and uh, so uh, that's, that's a better way than actually to take drugs and take oxytocin. Indeed, much safer, much more pleasant experience as well, absolutely. So uh, obviously we hear about women having multi-orgasms, is there any benefit for men in this regard? Well, for men um, it will help ejaculation, which mm -hmm. is the orgasm of men. I had, for example, um, um, a patient who during five years didn't have any uh, ejaculation, but he had uh, relationships, he, there was no problem for his erections, mm -hmm. and actually when he took oxytocin, small doses, uh, he said eight times on ten he could ejaculate uh, when he had intercourse. So basically it's fundamental for men mm. for orgasm and ejaculation. Mm. But it does not really improve in humans, in men, uh, erections. I see. Uh, it does in animals, but not in humans. I see. Oh, that's very interesting. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more later on about dosages and applications. Sometimes, uh, as a pharmacist, I've been approached by patients who said they tried oxytocin and it didn't seem to do very much for them. Is there any, any reason that we could explain that? Yes, um, one of the reasons, if you have a wrong diet, mm -hmm. as soon as your diet is wrong, and that's basically the Western diet with a lot of sweets, sugars, carbs, it doesn't seem to work. Um, and this is the case actually for most hormones and most peptides. Right. If you take a treatment and your food is wrong, it doesn't work. The only good food is a paleo uh, diet, it's a diet that exists when our ancestors were hunter and gatherers mm -hmm. and ate meat, vegetables and fruits. That's the good diet. Uh, drinks also, if you drink alcohol or drink Coca-Cola, it won't work so well. And we don't always know why, but it's so. So basically the, mo the main reason is that, and the other reason that could be is that you have other deficiencies. <coughs> mm -hmm. And when you're deficient in another hormone that is so prevailing in your symptoms that even if you give oxytocin it doesn't work, or it even aggravates the situation by decreasing a hormone level like cortisol for example. So basically uh, you need to, to check also the other hormones when you have, uh, want to have a super treatment. That's interesting. So that's almost like a, a warning sign for the patient. If you're not getting yeah. an effect from oxytocin, go see your anti-aging doctor because you're yes. probably deficient elsewhere. Yes. Fascinating. Thank you. And we'll talk shortly about dosages and applications. Thank you, Thierry. So, Thierry, I'd like to ask you, if I may, um, what about dosages? What do you normally recommend? Well, let's say in a normal person who takes mainly oxytocin for sociability, um, to be more sociable, 
uh, it's taking a five units international uh, in the morning. For children, it will be smaller, right. even sometimes a fraction, one or two units uh, for autism, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and then when they have, for example, intercourse, they could take or they go to a party, uh, they can take an additional dose of five units uh, in the evening. So this could be occasionally. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I wouldn't go higher amounts or then in very, very special situations because if you take much higher than that, uh, you lower your adrenal glands and people get tired, etc., uh, like uh, better in bed and, and not then walking. Yes. So basically, I, I, I think stick to those doses is for usual uh, do, um, usages. That's very interesting. Um, are there any particular applications that you prefer? I mean, do you like sublingual or intranasal or, or do you think there is a difference between those applications? I think there's a difference also in working. Um, if you take a sublingual one, it often um, will be absorbed quickly and you get two hours after sort of climax of effect. So that's perfect if you go somewhere, you meet people, you have to negotiate something and you should be friendly in that message. Well, take oxytocin before you'll see it will work much better. Um, then you have forms that are oral and they are um, sometimes uh, in a long acting form and those work much slower and, and they are more persistent so it could work in a person who has pain syndrome like mm -hmm. fibromyalgia um, but it's very difficult to get those products and you can also take a sublingual that you would repeat and then you have also injectables and injectables are probably even quicker in action mm -hmm. uh, than the sublingual they can be stronger uh, but they're very uncomfortable so it's more in cases where the sublingual won't work mm -hmm. There is on the market a lot of intranasal, but uh, many studies have shown that it doesn't seem to work as well. So you are missing often the effects, you have to take much more of the spray to get some of the efficacy, but it may help people. Yes, that's interesting. I, it might be interesting to ask as well, are there any natural ways that you can stimulate your own oxytocin production? Yes, there are. Um, if you just meet a person, and you're able to make oxytocin because uh, an autistic child will not be able, you will increase your oxytocin by meeting people. Um, if you touch a person, that person's oxytocin will increase and yours too. Mm -hmm. If you go to a massage, for example, you will have an increase of oxytocin. Mm -hmm. And even if you sing, if you're singing, will also ah. improve your uh, oxytocin. I won't sing. <laughs> uh, it. Uh, it won't be beautiful. <laughs> it will increase yours, but not ours. <laughs> oh, it's fascinating, and it, and it explains a lot. I mean, I think everyone would agree that a massage is a very pleasant experience. Yes, but there are women, for example, mm -hmm. who are not very sociable. Well, their oxytocin will not increase much. So you, you, it works mostly in those who already have a lot of oxytocin. That's very interesting. And what about side effects and contraindications? Is there anything we should look for? There's um, one big side effect is that when you take a dose that is too high, uh, you lower your adrenal glands, the cortisol goes down and you feel burned out. And you can be irritable, etc. So taking a too high dose does change the hormone balance and uh, can get adverse effects. So don't take a week on a row, 40 international units, for example, like they do in some autistic children, and I'm not sure it's a good long-term treatment. I see. Thank you for that. It's interesting. Well, thank you again, Thierry. And I'm sure a lot of people watching will be really interested in this subject. And I'd like to recommend to them your book, which is called Passion, Sex, and Long Life, The Oxytocin Adventure. And one of the great things about your books, if people aren't familiar with them, is that they're a real how-to guide. You're a very practical person, and it's not just the background, and the, it actually gets into detail, tells people how to take a product, what to look for. You know, I think in America they call them the chicken soup guides. You know, it's a really nice practical thing. And your books, as I say, they follow that trait. Are you working on any new books or new subjects at yeah, the moment? Yeah, I'm uh, working on a book that on how to reverse physical aging. I believe really that we have come to the time where we have very important information. It's also very practical with pictures, so you, you can recognize what uh, a nutritional or hormone treatment can do. Uh, and uh, it, it will come out very soon. And so. I'm also um, working on a... Um, textbook of hormone therapy, so that will really be the, the, the big book that has everything from A to Z uh, 
uh, also the theoretical things, not only the practical things. Yes. And there will be also a book coming out on how to reverse mental aging. And uh, we had very interesting results in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease recently and also in reversing paralysis. So I think mm. there will be a lot of uh, very interesting things mm. in, in those books. My goodness, I don't know where you find the time. Because apart from your books, you're also uh, going to many congresses, and indeed you have your own tr uh, medical training school, uh, and I believe you have hundreds of doctors who've taken uh, participated in that. And you have uh, a meeting coming up, uh, I believe, in, um, in November. Uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, in November, I think it's what we have in Europe as the most cutting-edge um, um, Congress. It's called Pro-Aging Europe Congress. Mm -hmm. And basically, we give uh, workshops where uh, people are learn, uh, physicians actually, learn intensively how to treat uh, how to reverse aging, or how to give a hormone therapy, or how to give a nutritional treatment. And then we have a session of one day congress where you, we have a, a lot of the, ver the best speakers mm -hmm. uh, and the best authorities in their domain of what is called pro-aging. Mm -hmm. We prefer the name pro-aging than anti-aging because we're not against aging, mm -hmm. we just want to make things much better for people who are aging. Quite. No, fascinating. And I have attended some of your um, congresses in the past and they really are well worth going to so I do advocate anyone who likes to come to lovely Brussels and to enjoy themselves and to really learn something in a great deal of detail which often isn't the case at other congresses. Uh, so do you have a website Thierry that we could tell people where they could go and, and stay informed with what you're doing? <clears throat> yes I have a website for patients called uh, hertog.eu mm -hmm. and, um, and then I have a, a website for training for physicians mostly but also where the books can be um, um, bought the general public and uh, the physician books which is called hertalkmedicalschool.eu Fantastic. Well we'll put those up on, on the film and I encourage everyone to go and have a good look and uh, to come and meet you soon just like I have today. Dr. Thierry Hertog, thank you so much. Thank you Phil. Thank Pleasure. you. <laughs>